If you have ongoing exposure to controlling people, it's a virtual certainty that you're going to experience blurry boundaries, which is why I have created the extensive online course called This Is Me, Establishing Boundaries with the Controllers in Your Life. There's a link below that will give you all of the details, and I hope that you would find it therapeutic. One of the most common questions that I receive is the simple question, do narcissists know that they are narcissists? Do they understand how inappropriate their approach toward life really is? Now, when you take a look at the core ingredients of narcissism, it's incredibly difficult to justify and say, yeah, this is a great way to go. Narcissists, by definition, are very self-absorbed, uh, selfish in the way that they engage with you, lots of entitlement that they bring to the equation. They're very manipulative and exploitive as a result. They don't have any empathy for you because they're the only one that matters. They add, act with an attitude of, of uh, superiority over you. And so it's very difficult for them to openly state, oh, yeah, that's a, that's a really good way to go. So at some level, we can say that narcissists realize that those kind of ingredients are inappropriate, and obviously they act upon those ingredients. And so part of the answer is yes. Narcissists do in fact know that they're inappropriate, but also the answer can eventually become no. They don't know how inappropriate they are in the sense that they commit themselves to alternate reality. That's another primary ingredient of narcissism, and we're going to get to that in just a moment. Now, I want to give you just a simple little illustration about how uh, this works, about how they learn how to have a cover-up of their impropriety, and the illustration is when I was about five years old, my brother, this is my twin brother, Lee, and I, we're out uh, doing something. We saw a kid throw a rock through a guy's garage uh, garage uh, window. Uh, and uh, just foreshadowing, uh, there were no cars in the garage, fortunately. And so he laughed and ran away. So my brother and I got a bunch of rocks and we finished the job. Uh, we uh, threw the rock through the window and got all the glass around the edges and then threw that, uh, threw the rocks into there. And then when we went home, my mother said, hey, what have you boys been doing? I told her, I said, well, we, uh, there's this kid that threw a rock through uh, Mr. Cook's uh, window. And so my bro uh, Lee and I, uh, we went and we finished the job. We threw some rocks in there too. And she had a horrified look on her face and we realized, oh, so in other words, we did wrong. Now, uh, as a five-year-old kid, I was naive enough to think, well, if somebody else does it, I guess I can do it too. I had to learn, okay, there are just some things about you that are not appropriate, and you need to take responsibility, and we did. We have to, had to go to Mr. Cook's house and explain everything and pay him back, etc. When narcissists make mistakes, when they blunder, when they show their inappropriate side, they go straight into the cover-up mode. They think, okay, I know that I've done something like that, only they're not just a five-year-old person. They can be 25 or 85 or uh, somewhere in between. And they can think, if you know those things about me, I'm going to get in trouble and I'm not going to let that happen. And so narcissists, knowing that they have improper behaviors and improper motives, they'll go into a strong sense of defensiveness. And defensiveness is probably the biggest evidence that we can have that they actually know how inappropriate they are. I want you to think, how common is it for narcissists to just go straight into the cover-up mode? When I was a five-year-old kid, I didn't cover up because I didn't know any different. And I learned later on, okay, certain things you don't need to say. But uh, narcissists is like, there are just some things I'm not going to tell you about myself. You will not get to know me because if you do learn certain things about me, uh, then it's not going to be pretty for me. And of course, being self-absorbed, uh, they're not going to go into that space. Narcissists are not an open book. Uh, it, they, they may make fake statements to that effect and say, oh yeah, I'm really open, when in fact, that's one of their lies. Likewise, part of their admission, if you will, that they know that they're inappropriate is that they tell lies very easily. They keep secrets. 
They're very evasive, they have hidden activities, and the fact that they deliberately and specifically keep things secret is their way of saying, yeah, if you see behind the veil here and find out who I am, this is not going to be good for me. I know that what I'm doing is not appropriate, and so the remedy to that is keep it to myself. You don't need to know. Uh, in addition, they uh, uh, narcissists are known not to be uh, willing to admit when they do wrong. You know, like like when I was that five-year-old kid, I had to admit, okay, I guess that was wrong. Uh, narcissist is like, no, what you think might be a hurt or a blunder um, is uh, is something that you can interpret it that way, but I'm not gonna go there. And so they, they will not uh, be vulnerable regarding their needs. They have hurts, they have blunders, they have mistakes and regrets, um, but at some level, it's like, but the more that's known, then the more that harms me. So therefore, I'm not going to do it. Yeah, I know I'm wrong, but it's not going to come out in the open. Uh, then they'll use point blank denial. If you say, well, I know for a fact that you did such and such, or you told me this yesterday, or uh, the, what you said over here was completely irrational, they, they can just look at you with a straight face and say, you don't know what you're talking about. And they'll go straight into denial. They're very willing to cover their tails just so they can uh, keep their good face, but doesn't work very well. And then what they'll do is they'll mobilize their anger in such a way where it diverts the attention. They can blow, they can be angry and shouting and screaming, or they'll go into the passive aggressive silent treatment, but it's all their way of saying, uh, if I can just keep the focus on you and tell you how awful and terrible you are, then we don't have to worry about uh, 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 looking at my issues and my contributions to the problems, which could be uh, very uh, embarrassing for me. And so even their use of anger is in its own backwards way a tacit acknowledgement that they're off base, but if they can make you seem more, more off base, then they win. Now, having said all of that, uh, there's a whole other side of narcissism that takes them to a place of, uh, of uh, non-reality. We, we were referred to it as their alternate reality. And basically what that comes down to is if you tell yourself lies often enough, you actually start believing it. And so on one level, narcissists with all of their defensiveness and denial, etc., like I just mentioned, they know there's something really off base. There's something very uh, troublesome about them. But on another level, they've got the whole thing tightly rationalized. And, uh, and they can uh, come up with all sorts of uh, projections onto you or all sorts of excuses about why they really are far better than what you're giving them credit for. And you'll hear uh, narcissists say things like, um, do you know how helpful I've been? I mean, I'm probably one of the most helpful and nicest people you've ever met. Or do you know how much money I give to charity? Have you looked at that? Very Does the narcissist do something like that? I'm, I'm, I'm incredibly uh, appropriate. Or if you see anything wrong with me, I'm just like everybody else. And so if you want to put me in that place, then you have to be in there too. Only you're just worse. And so they'll go into this tight uh, rationalization uh, where they are able to construct their alternate reality. We have another term for that. It's called the false self. And so uh, what they'll do is they'll make heavy use of blame shifting and they'll make heavy use of projection uh, as keeping their, uh, as part of keeping their alternate reality going. For example, they may say something like, well, if I did anything wrong, it was your fault. I mean, you were the one that set the whole thing up. Or if I did anything wrong, it was because we had bad weather or uh, the circumstances on that project uh, were uh, wrong from the start, but set up by somebody else. They, they have the whole thing uh, framed in such a way where uh, they can walk away saying, see, I'm, I'm completely normal. Or uh, another way that they'll uh, use their um, blame shifting is, well, if, if I did get frustrated, you know, let's say they've had a big, huge outburst, it was because that person was being so completely irresponsible, the teenager, the person I work with, my mother-in-law, whoever it might be. Or they may say something like, well, we were just playing and drinking and having a good time. And so under normal circumstances, certain things wouldn't have happened. But you know how guys get, you know, or girls get. We can just be whatever we are. Or uh, do you think that I 
have a temper? This is another way they'll rationalize. Do you think that I have a temper? What about your mother? Uh, what about your mother? Or what about the time that you did this? And so in their alternate reality, they'll go along and say, well, when all is said and done, I really am uh, quite good and I'm a whole lot better than everybody else. And so even though they have a life where they do much cover up, they also have a life where they do much rationalization and justification about how terrific they are. And then they'll go into projection. They'll see in you what they don't want you to see in them. They'll say, well, if anybody around here is critical, it's you. Or uh, if there's somebody that, uh, that's, uh, that's got a bad temper, it's you. Or if there's somebody that's not reliable, it's you. And so they see in everybody else what they uh, are deflecting away from themselves. And uh, in, the, in the long run, uh, they, they actually can say to themselves, you know what? This world would be a lot better place if there were more people around just like me. Good Lord. <laughs> and that's how they think. And so, yes, they know that they're inappropriate. No, they won't go along with that. And, and uh, eventually they begin uh, believing their own lies. And so I want to go back and ask, how many times have you tried to attempt uh, or have you attempted to try to convince them that there's something very wrong? Uh, you know, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Narcissist, you're messed up. You need to change. Doesn't work. And so, uh, even though you see it, uh, let's, let's, uh, recognize their defenses tend to be very tight. Their alternate reality tends to be quite impenetrable. And so, um, knowing that they're going to flip it around and say, this is all your problem. You, you have a perception problem. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping you can think, now do you understand why people like me in my profession will say, you know, at, at some point you just need to move, uh, leave well enough alone and move on. Uh, you know what the truth is. Uh, part of their uh, whole issue is they can't come to terms with truth. Um, but accept the fact that that's where they are and whatever efforts you make to try to get them to see the light probably is going to uh, just create that much more friction and tension and you want to move on. And as, as you do, I'm hoping you realize your self-respect is hanging in the balance. Uh, what they're wanting to do is, is rip you apart and elevate themselves falsely. And it's like, no, uh, I wish that I could get you to see the light. But uh, that being the case, I respect myself too much to be a partner on your stage. I'm not playing your games of denial and blame shifting and projection and alternate reality. You can count me out. I hope that videos such as this can, can give you some good awareness of what you're dealing with and, and good food for thought. And if you've not already done so, I would encourage you to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. We're going to keep more videos coming toward you uh, as a way of keeping you hopefully in a, an enlightened uh, frame of mind. If you have a need for therapy, and many times when you are dealing with this, that's a very prominent kind of an issue, we have a sponsor that can take you to a whole team of licensed professional therapists. My entire adult life, of course, I am a therapist, but I've been referring people to therapy. I believe in it, and I've had very good feedback from individuals who have used our sponsor. So go beneath the video here, and you'll find the link for our online counseling and therapy sources. In addition, I have courses now. And these are meant to be uh, therapeutic uh, events in themselves. We have, each course has many videos with written material and questions that will walk you through various kinds of things, uh, whether we're talking about uh, setting boundaries or finding yourself or uh, how to have healthy relationship connections and go through and, and uh, avail yourself to those. We have books and other resources. Well, uh, do they know how inappropriate they are? The typical yes and no. But at some point, the, the big question is, do you know how inappropriate they are? And as you see it and spot it for what it is, I'm hoping you can say, I am not going to enter into that space. I'm committed to decency. I'm committed to uh, Dr. C. DRC stands for dignity, respect, and civility. That's who I want to be. And in doing so, with your steadiness, you can become a person of peace. Quite a contrast to the lack of peace that they carry on the inside of themselves. I want you to be a person of peace.